Okay, 3.5 circle properties. A chord is a line. Now, keep in mind something about circle properties. We're not just looking at the circle properties for a, a circle that includes a radius or a diameter. Those are the simple properties of a circle. We're going to go beyond just a radius or a diameter, and now we're going to look at a chord. Well, what is a chord? A chord is a line segment that joins two points on a curve. Notice here, these are a bunch of different chords. A diameter is also considered a chord, but it is a special type of chord. It is a chord that goes through the center. That's a diameter. Anything that does not go through the center but has the same properties as a diameter, meaning that it touches two points on the circle, it goes across the circle, but not through the center, is called a chord. So these three lines that you see here are all chords, okay? Now those chords, there is some an important property that says the right bisector of a chord passes through the center of a circle. So if I was to draw, for example, a right bisector, what is a bisector? Well, it cuts in half, two points, so the midpoint, find the midpoint of a chord, and we draw a perpendicular line to that chord, and that perpendicular line is guaranteed to pass through the center of the circle, right there. So this right bisector of this chord passes through the center of the circle, and that is true for any right bisector of any chord. Next item to look at is there is only one circle that passes through three given non-collinear points. Well, let's look at the definition and what this definition means. There is only one circle, so I can draw one circle that passes through three given non-collinear points. So three points, they're non-collinear. What does that mean? Non-collinear means they cannot lie on the same line. Basically, three points that do not pass through the same line. Look here. There are three points right here. One, two, and three. Notice they don't lie on the same line, so you can form like a triangle with them. Well, these three points can only have one circle that passes through all those three points. If I was to draw a larger or smaller circle, it would definitely not pass through those three points in particular. So, how does that help us? Well, knowing this, we can move forwards. For example, example one, you're asked to verify that the center of the circle lies on the right bisector of chord AB. So this is the first part, first example. So we're going to pr use the um, property of the first one to be able to prove it. So here's our chord AB. Find the coordinates of A and B. So we need the slope of A and B. So those are the coordinates of A and B. Coordinates of A is 3, 4. Is that the right coordinates? Sorry, let's look at the coordinates. You know, sorry. 4, 2, and the coordinates of B is 2, negative 4, so that's what I did here, folks. 4, 2, and 2, negative 4. Find those, the slope, and you get 6, 2. 6 over 2, the slope of that is equal to 3 once you simplify it. Knowing this, you now move forwards. You now find the perpendicular slope, which is negative 1 over 3. So the perpendicular slope of AB is negative 1 over 3. What that means is we have now found the slope of this line. But we need to know if this line passes through this center. The center is 0, 0. It looks like it does. We need to verify that it does. So let's find the equation of this right bisector. The equation of the right bisector means we need the midpoint of AB and the midpoint of AB is 3, negative 1. And if we look here, that's the point that we see. It's 3, negative 1. We need a midpoint and a slope to find uh, a point and a slope to find the equations. So you're going to sub the slope 
and the point into the equation y equals mx plus b. We plug it in to find our b value. Our b value is 0. So we need to prove that the center now passes through the equation y equals negative one third x plus zero. We need to know that the center it actually is a coordinate that lies on the right bisector equation. So we do that by doing a check. We check that the point exists and we find out that zero equals zero. Therefore, the right bisector of chord AB passes through the center zero, zero. All right, let's move on to the next one. Example number two. Show that the points P, Q, and R lie on the circle with its center at C. So we need to know that these three point, these three have a center at 0, at 4, 1. How are we going to do that? Well, we have a circle. We know that the three points lie on the same circle. These three points will have this center C. All right, we need to find the value of this center C. How can we do that? Well, we know that the distance from C to R, C to Q, and C to P are all equal distance apart. They're equally dis equal distance apart. Well, if I know the coordinates of C, which I do, and the coordinates of R, which I do, and the coordinates of Q, which I do, and the coordinates of P, you know that each of these are going to have this, should have the same length if they lie on the same circle. So, what we can do is find the length. Find the length of P, C, Q, C, and R, C. So, to find the different distances. And we do that. So, we're finding all the distances and we're going to find the distance of CP, CQ, CR, and we find out the three distances are all equal to 41. Since the distances from the center C to the points PQ and R are equal, the points PQR, therefore, must lie in the same circle with the center at C. And notice that P, Q, and R are non-collinear. That means they do not lie on the same line. All right, folks, that's the end of 3.5. That's the end of Chapter 3. Good luck. Have a numerical day. Take care.